Jackson City and work for the powerful special interests that do not care what you are going through. So even though every two years on the first Tuesday in November, Missourians show up and they demand a Missouri that reflects conservative values, less government, and they ask us to make Missouri a leader in these United States, the rhinos are in charge. And so as I've traveled around this state for the past two years, I have put 80,000 miles on my truck and met tens of thousands of Republicans who have said they are frustrated, they are disappointed, they are angry. And I want you to know that if you find yourself disappointed with the lack of big Republican ideas passing in Jefferson City, if you are frustrated, if you are angry, just like so many others that I have met, I want you to know you're not alone. I want you to know that there are millions of Missouri Republicans just like you that are tired of the go-along, get-along mentality of failure in Jefferson City. And they are supporting and coming on board with my campaign because they love the idea that I'm going to deliver a reckoning for Jefferson City when I get in my office. <laughs> supporting me so that we can get to is a, is a Missouri that is going to be the envy of other states in the union. And you know what this Missouri includes? Number one, on my first day as governor, I commit to you here and now, we will start the deportation and arrest of every single one of the 75 
We're going to make sure we never again allow the sale of Missouri farmland to any foreign country. And more than that, which is this next part is what makes me different than my opponents. For every square inch that we've already lost because of the bad votes that Mike here took, we're getting them all back. Every single one, just like Governor Sarah Huntley said, we're doing that in Arkansas. And finally, we're going to start protecting our communities, protecting each other. We're going to protect our communities from the crime that's spreading out from St. Louis and Kansas City, and which have been allowed to descend into chaos because we have soft on crime regimes that don't want to put bad guys in jail and don't want to fund their police so that law enforcement can do their job. We're going to protect our children in our schools from the CRT, DEI, transgender nonsense. Yes. You know, as a side note, I can just tell you that I went, when my two children were young, I didn't let them choose their bedtime much less that which the Lord himself has ordained with man and woman. And yet we have these woke leftists from Washington, D.C. sending money and mandates from the D.C. down to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education in every public school district of this state, forcing them to teach our children this nonsense instead of reading, writing, and arithmetic. I want you to know that in my first budget that I submit to the legislature, I'm going to defund every federal dollar coming from the Federal Department of Education with all this nonsense. We're going to dismantle one of Jefferson City's worst bureaucracies, the Department of Elementary and Secondary yeah. Education. Yeah. And the next time, the next time the world leftists think they're going to have a drag queen show that, they, that children are led into, I'm not going to the legislature to pass another law. I'm not going to the library to pass another rule. I'm sending in a highway patrol. We are arresting every single person that's exposing these children to this nonsense. Why are we doing this? I told you about my son, my only son. But I want to also have a daughter who just turned 18 just a few months ago. She graduated high school. Her name's Lisa. She has a 4.0 GPA. And she's beautiful. I'm very proud that she got both of those things from her mother. <laughs> I know that wherever she goes and whatever she does, she's going to be very successful because she's just that awesome. The reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm asking you to consider the Missouri and fighting for it one more time is because I'd sure like for her to be able to find that opportunity and show me something. I don't want her to have to move to some other state or some other great place that offers opportunities that we fail to provide simply because of these weak deep rhinos down in Jefferson City. Maybe there's some great children, God willing, in my future. Maybe my daughter's going to have a family. Maybe she's going to have a business. Maybe she's going to own a farm right out here in Freedom Love and Franklin County. Yeah. But if we don't, if we don't take this opportunity to enact everything that we're promising in campaign season, the odds that that's going to become a reality are far less. So I'm asking you for the next 12 days to look through the silliness that we're seeing come out in some of the ads. Because the, for eight years, i got to tell you, for eight years, the media has referred to me as the most conservative, ultra-right, hard-line, MAGA, ultra-MAGA, super-conservative, terrorist senator in the Missouri Senate. I know, I know. I'm very excited about that. And yet, according to the text messages and, and postcards that my opponents are putting out, I apparently have made the tr transition to flaming liberal learned almost overnight. <laughs> but let me ask you this. Would a flaming liberal be calling for the elimination of the personal property tax and calling for the deportation of every one of those illegals in our state? Absolutely not. Don't be afraid of it. We can make a huge difference for every person in this state and every Missourian yet to be born if we're willing to not be afraid of the message coming from the very well-funded pockets of the most powerful in Jefferson City. Don't be afraid. I'll leave you and end my comments tonight with one of my favorite passages from the Bible. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. 
Have I not commanded thee? Be bold, courageous. Do not be dismayed. Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you shall go. Let's go to Missouri. Let's go to Missouri. Yeah. And then it just drops off into a ravine. And we spent 
hundred thousand dollars again, working on that, filling that, trying to fill it with rocks. So we're a million dollars deep to a new highway partnership that I don't think we need. It's going to be less efficient, and it's always a little bit easier, a little bit cheaper to fix what you got, to be careful what you got, and start from scratch and do something new. So getting in the weeds a little bit, but that's another one of my bullet points. Let's see, third thing I can think of here. Uh, we got to respect our employees. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of people over the last five months that work for the county, and uh, there are a lot of people upset. Uh, the employees are the ones that keep things moving in the county. Some places we're a little bit slow at getting the process done, but we have to respect our employees. We've got to work with them and retain those employees. Not you know, do everything you can to undermine them and negotiate in bad faith. Another example is right now the commissioners have got a suit against them because they called a meeting for all highway department employees and said we're very proud of you we're going to give you a 5% raise. So everybody was all happy with that. They thought they were going to give them a 5% raise. And then they get behind the scenes and start negotiating. <laughs> and all the non union members got a two and a half percent raise. I'm sorry, the union members got a two and a half percent raise, which I think there's 15 points, so about 45 or 47 of them got a two and a half percent raise. The three or four non union members got a five percent raise. Now, what does that do for the uh, morale for the county? I mean, that's just that's bad news, arguing, and bad faith. Negotiating that happen. So I just there's so many things like that. I've got about ten of them, but I get a little bit nervous up here when I'm talking about them. I'm happy to talk to everybody about the individual. But there's a lot of things out there that I don't like that's going on. Uh, spending and wasting a lot of money, and I think I can do a better job working one day a week, which is about what's going on now. But I'm going to be full time. I'm going to be here five days a week, and I'll be, I'll be in my office, I'll be out on the road solving problems, and everybody's going to have my phone number. So I will be your full-time commissioner, out on one day a week, and show up for photo ops. I'll be out there doing the job.
and get some money back and pay off that $25 or $30 million. So it's, it's, it's a good brand. So where we're at, well, hope you heard that, we can get some money back. Uh, other than that, uh, the county, like I said, as experience-wise, last 16 years I've been in private industry. I work for a major manufacturer. I'm the senior director of engineering for the company. Uh, I do research, do power algorithm, all kinds of high-tech stuff. But the problems we're having here at the county, I have no, no problem. I mean, all my past experience and, and with Paul, with his numbers, he can work out the numbers once we get that money from the bill and pay off that the debt we have. I think we're going to do a good job. But you know, we've got highways, we've got roadways to take care of. I'm not sure if most people realize BODOT takes care of the interstate, they take care of number routes, and they also take care of the letter routes. Which in most states, letter routes are taken care of by the counties. Missouri is unique. Mona takes care of it, which is good for us. So the two different buildings that, that Paul spoke to, they have 400 miles each that they take care of. We're a first class county, and we're supposed to be having paved roads. We still have a lot of rock roads out there. So we got a long ways to go. I know we can do it. Uh, we've got some culverts that are deficient. Uh, we need to program them, get them out there, fix them correctly. I'm a, I own a farm here in the county, and uh, I see the same thing. We've got some great workers, but we need a little bit better engineering. Uh, some of them that they hold out to the next ring and get washed out. A lot of it's, they're not being provided the right equipment, they're not being provided the right, right material. So once I'm in there, and Paul's in there, we can get the, the right things lined up for them. And they can fix their culverts correctly so we don't have to keep going back every time we get a monsoon rain. And we can start focusing on the, on the roadways in those fixed. Uh, I'm also a veteran, 10 years, uh, served in the Middle East. Uh, thank you. And wherever Bill is, that t shirt he's got is an upgrade to the Air Force. So we should be proud of wearing that Navy t shirt. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. We need your vote. August the 6th. I don't know if you heard, but my only opponent, he loved the district. He loved the county. He loved the state. So he's in Wiggins, Colorado, working, and I'm happy for him. I hope he's having a good time. I hope that's the job he really wants there. And if it is, I'm happy for him. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't take too long, but I still got to do that. So, we've got to get out on August the 6th. So, uh, some of you may have read the paper that I have sued the county. That's incorrect. I did not sue the county. I filed, I filed for a petition for a judgment from the court to declare him ineligible. So, let's not sue the county. And they talk about, well, I have to reprint the ballots. I don't want the ballots reprinted. I don't want any extra expenditure to the county. And that could all be fixed without reprinting the ballots. And I think we got a man over there that can take care of it. He's got the knowledge. And he's been doing a very good job for us. And I'm sure that he's going to be doing a really good job for us if we send out there. So I'd like to thank everybody for the time. And if you have any questions, I'll be sitting over here or I'll be being around. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Everybody. Good job. Okay, we move on to the next part of our program. Uh, we're going to go with our, our state rep, candidate Raphael Andergal, District 119. Woo! Thank you, everybody. Yes, I'm back. But anyway, what makes me so happy is a room full of patriots, conservatives. We need to keep that in mind. The election is not going to be decided for the future of Missouri in November. It's going to be decided on August 6th. We need to put conservatives in office on August 6th. And a lot of them are here tonight. You got to hear from some already. You're going to get to hear from some more. So please, grab your family members, grab your friends, grab your neighbors. You know what the conservatives 
legislators, if you have any questions, look at Freedom Principle, Byron Keeling's organization. They have the conservative uh, endorsements listed right on there. It's the best cheat sheet in the state. But what I want to do again is go ahead and fight for your freedoms and your rights, those which are bestowed to you by God, not by bureaucrats in Jefferson City. I was the first candidate in the county to take the vetting test to prove that I'm an actual Republican and do the background, which is why I'm so honored to be the only candidate in my district race who is actually endorsed by the Franklin County Republican Central Committee. Plus, I'm here to fight for your Second Amendment rights, which is why I'm the only one in my race who is endorsed by 100% for the Missouri Firearm Coalition, because we are going to keep our guns and we are going to keep our rights. Also, I'm the only one in my race who did in the crime assigned abortion petition that was instigated by George Soros. But I went out there and I fought because I'm here to be a voice for the unborn and to fight for you because I will continue to fight for life and God fight for the rights bestowed upon us by God. Yes. Speaking of which, we're going to do away with DEI, but we need to go further. We need to put the Ten Commandments in our classrooms for our children. We need to put God back into our class so our children have the great values that we had when we were young and be able to grow up to honor God, honor their families, and honor their communities. And I will push and I will fight for all of us. And I will fight for great blue collar jobs and companies coming to Missouri. And I am going to push to get rid of the personal property tax. And I know this isn't popular with a lot of bureaucrats, but I'm also going to fight to repeal the gas tax because paying 29 cents a gallon in the state of Missouri is ridiculous. And what are we getting for it? I'm not going to be up here too long. You've already heard who I am. Most of you already have heard me grab a sign. I'm always available. God bless you. God bless the great state of Missouri. And God bless President Trump, who says, fight, fight, fight. Raphael, we're going to have to work on your enthusiasm. <laughs> Another bill that I was a co-sponsor was the 
SAFE Act, the, the Second Amendment Preservation Act, which is trying to protect our Second Amendment rights. Because those are important. You know, our founding fathers, they put that in there not for hunting, they put it for a, a government that was overbearing and tried to take possession of what we have and try to rule over us like a, like a king would in a, in, a, in a land that they have uh, kings and queens. But still, uh, also, uh, some of the other legislation uh, last year that I'd like to mention is one of my bills that, that was passed. It allowed farmers to take the uh, business income tax deduction because whenever they passed the 2017 federal law, they, whenever the Missouri, which is reciprocal, they did not uh, include that for farmers. So now that is, and it's available to them. And then this year, the governor a couple of weeks ago, signed a bill of mine, 1912, which uh, tied up some of the regulations on the Salt Parity Act. And what that is, it allows entities like escorts and partnerships and now trusts to deduct their state income tax at the entity level, which is the same since there's a caps on the uh, on the amount that you can take on your state of and, and you know, I do work with a lot of bills, uh, tax bills. I have one that would bring pension bills into uh, or an exclusion that's equal to the public pension. And we passed House uh, City Bill 190 last year, uh, where uh, we got to uh, eliminate the tax on Social Security. Uh, we also eliminated the exclusion on the public pensions. And we left out the, the uh, private pensions. So what my bill would have done, got it in the Senate, but it didn't get any further than that. So. Uh, and then there's several other tax bills, and, and uh, I do a lot of tax bills, and the reason why I, I do is because I've been practicing CPA for 40 years. And so that's kind of what I look at. It, and also the personal property tax. I have a bill that would have, would have helped take a step with uh, reducing some of the growth in personal property tax, and at least would have tied it to either Hancock or CPI. And so, uh, again, that bill was, we was negotiating on it till the final day of the session and, and it didn't make it. But, uh, you know, uh, one thing I'd like to mention, uh, this evening is personal property tax. I would love to see us eliminate personal property tax as much as anyone. But I can tell you, uh, it will be difficult in the Missouri legislature to eliminate it. You know, uh, right now, you know, uh, with the you know with the individuals we have, I just don't think that they would do it. I mean, I support getting rid of it. It's just that you have, you know, you're going to have to have the support in order and the votes to pass the legislation. Because uh, right now, uh, with uh, one way it, it can be done would be through initiative petitions because our initiative petition process is so simple. 50% plus one. And, and that's something I have worked on for the last four years. I have bills that dealt with initiative petition. It's been combined with other ones. Uh, but we need to, you know, I think we need to reform our initiative petition because I'm going to tell you, abortion is going to be on the ballot in November. No matter what our law is, this is going to supersede it. So if we don't get out and vote against that amendment that will be on the ballot, we could have a, uh, in our Constitution, we could have a, a, an abortion rights in there that we don't like. So I urge everyone to pay attention to it and to work, uh, when you work against it, try to eliminate it. So anyway, again, I want to thank everyone uh, uh, come out tonight, and uh, I appreciate you know all of the individuals I got because two years ago I got redistricted into Franklin County, and I tell you I have met a lot of nice people and a lot of good supporters, and I appreciate that. I want to thank all of you. Thank you.
committee, which means all the tax bills go through his committee. And what I really love about Mike, he loves to cut taxes. So he's always trying to cut taxes. So I love that. So we'll move on. Um, so we're done with this part of the program. And so now we're going to do uh, a little bit of congressional politics. If uh, Peter Piper would like to come up, he's running against Dan Wagner in Congressional District 2, of which we are all part.
And we were down in Springfield. St. Louis County had 138 seats, 138 delegates St. Louis County was supposed to have for our state caucus. St. Louis County sat 75 delegates. That's it. That's terrible. I went down to Springfield as an alternate. I had no idea I'd be a delegate. But I was. I was delegate. Because St. Louis County has been weak and they're dragging the rest of us down. Yep. We need to stop that. I won't, obviously, having been recognized in St. Louis County with 196,000 votes, 50,000 of which were in the primary. If I could just get 50,000 votes in this primary, our current representative will be gone. Again, we need to pay more attention to our own backyard. I was visiting with some folks that were the elected leaders from Gerald. Everybody know where Gerald is? All right, good. Well, I don't think our current representative knows where Gerald is. No, I don't think so. But the man running against her does. And I know Gerald has some infrastructure issues. Yeah, you yeah, know that. Well, as a U.S. representative in the second congressional district, first of all, welcome to the second congressional district. All of you in Franklin County, welcome to the second congressional district. This is the job. This is what a representative does. The representative says hello, wants to know your name, wants to know what problems you have, and carry that voice to Washington, D.C. That is currently not happening. I'm under no illusions. One man cannot make a difference in D.C. Well, maybe the president can, and we're voting for Trump. And he's going to change some of the things in D.C. But the legislature, our representative, needs to align with more people that think like the second congressional does, not the representative of the second congressional. Y'all remember my name? Peter Fife. The website is fiferforcongress.com. Please take a look. There's a contact button on there. If I don't get to talk to every one of you, you all have the opportunity to hit the contact button on my website. I'll respond to you. Not some robot, not some staffer that doesn't know whether or not they know the answer or not. I'll respond to you. I'll answer the best of my ability. I'll see you on August 6th. Fight for the Congress. Thank you.
to practice up to nine offices in Southwest Missouri when we're serving the aging population. We plan ahead for folks. We prevent fires and pitfalls. But I also fight for farmers, veterans, and those with special needs. I don't go away from problems very easy. It's in my DNA. It's what I love to do. I love to solve problems and I love to fight for other people. I'm a mom of three. My oldest is pretty 19 here in a few months and heading off to college. I've got a son that's 15 and a daughter that's 12. And I've been married 21 years. My husband's a marine vet and a small business owner as well. So that's a little bit about me. So how did I get into this? Why am I here? Well, I can assure you it's not because I need a job, and it's not because I need a ladder to climb. I've already achieved my career goals. I set out to be a successful attorney and advocate, and I've done that. Being in politics was not anything I ever planned to do. But a couple years ago, I got a call from some conservatives in my area and thought I would be good to seek the treasurer appointment that was coming available during that time. I was actually in Carlin picking up my daughter and caught it laughed honestly when I hung up the phone. I thought, what in the world was going on? Why is someone asking me to do this? So I went home and talked to my husband about it. And I actually waited 24 hours because I wasn't really sure how I was going to have that conversation. Because I kind of in my mind already thought things happen for a reason and I probably wasn't going to go for it. But wanted to talk with him first, and we prayed about it. So I decided to bring a ring and a hat, or my hat in the ring, sorry, it's been a long day, and um, went through what I thought was going to actually be the process, and it was nothing but that, it was a game. I think a lot of us know that that sort of game is being played in Jeff City right now, but I actually have a front row seat to it, and I think that was by design. So when I finally got my courtesy interview with the governor's office, and I say courtesy because I was being taken off for four months, it was a fun interview, whereas everybody else was getting to have an in-person interview. So I'll be honest, I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder when I went into it. Right out of the gate, I was, it, I was said to me by the governor's office, why would we appoint someone like you? You're an outsider. So when I tell you I'm an outsider, I actually didn't even give myself that name. Someone else gave that to me, but I wore it as a badge of honor. And I told the governor's office, you're, that's exactly why you should appoint me. Because we need more outsiders in Jeff City. We need more people that are bought and paid for, that are actually going to work for Missouri. They obviously disagreed and went in another direction. But our parting words were this. I said, if I don't like to give you a point, I'm going to run anyway. I said that for two reasons. One, I genuinely hoped that they would appoint someone that I felt comfortable with. And two, it was a promise that if I didn't, I was putting them on board and I was going to run. And I haven't been taken seriously in this race until probably four or five months ago. In fact, people wouldn't even say my name. I was just some woman from Springfield. That's, that's really what I was called. But I've given up a run for their money because I'm actually getting attacked now. And I hear that when they start attacking you, you're over the target. So I'm a fighter, and I'm going to keep fighting. I don't need a job. I'm not about paid for. I'm just here to tell the truth and work for Missourians. Over the last two years, I've taken a deep dive into the treasurer's office and discovered two problems. One, we have a complete lack of transparency in Jeff City. And I think you all know it, but it's actually happened because I've spent time diving in and trying to figure out where in the world all this money is going. It's no secret our budget has ballooned in the last five years. It's more than doubled, actually. I wanted to know why and where that money was going. And I hit a lot of roadblocks. And I think that's disgusting. It's our money, we have a right to know where it's going. So within one month of being elected, I'm going to tell a little story about where our money's going. I set up a website with my phone called showmemomoney.com. You can go to it now, it's got a man with a clipboard, and it's going to be a one stop, easy place where you can go and see where our money's actually going. Current design is set up to serve 
there was a curtain so that our legislators can hide behind it. So that people actually have to dig around and hear roadblocks when they're like, well, what about this? What about this? I've had so many questions from folks about, I thought we passed this and this money was supposed to go to schools. Is it really going to schools? Why do they keep coming back for more? We take more money from the federal government than any other state. You and I both know that that strings attached money, right? Right. So we need to pull back the curtain on Jeff City and show where this money's actually going. I recently discovered that we are spending money um, on history museums to promote drag shows and story times at some of these history museums. I actually pulled up a itinerary in May. Um, June was Pride Month, and they put on a exhibit there at the St. Louis History Museum, and there was invite your families to story time to learn about the history of drag shows and the LGBTQ and history and, and the state, and I just, that's our tax dollars. And you can't find that information out just by looking on our websites that we currently have in place. So I'm going to look her back on that and show you where your money's actually going, and I believe that's going to hold our legislators accountable. And then I'm going to take a more proactive approach. I'm going to be more watchful where these funds are going. We have these huge bills, bills that start out as 10 pages, and by the time they get shoved through, they're 160 pages, and nobody knows what's in them. And that's by design. And so money's going out the door, these bills are drafted in a way to be very ambiguous to use the term attorney use all the time. And no one's really paying attention. And so we're paying for things that are against Missouri law, things that we shouldn't be doing. So we need to be more proactive. As an attorney for 18 years, I've been providing what I call a fiduciary obligation. Fiduciary obligations mean you are acting in the best interest of your client. And I believe our politicians need to do the same thing. They need to act in the best interest of Missouri instead of the special interest groups and lobbyists. So that's my promise to you. A couple things to note about me. Um, again, I'm an outsider and I'm really proud of that. Um, I am a very conservative Republican. I have recently called a liberal, so I can relate when Bill is up here talking about those things. I was at this week as someone that's very liberal. So um, I'm the only candidate on my ticket that did not get the pro-life endorsement. And that was a little hurtful just because I am very, very pro-life. I graduated law school with a baby on my hip. Getting pregnant law school was not part of my plan, but it was God's plan. And so I fought through that, and it was one of the hardest and most proud moments of my life. So I want you guys to know that about me that I am pro-life and that I will fight for Missouri's and I will fight for all life. I would appreciate your vote on August 6th. My name is Lori Rook. For more information, you can go to LoriRook.com. And thank you.
And about 2 a.m. in the morning, one of the Democrat state senators stood up, and of course they were filibustering, and they said, Senator Hoskins, what, what are you doing? Transgender surgeries on kids? That's just health care for kids. Can you believe that? I couldn't believe it either. I stood up with her and I said, that's not health care for kids. That's child abuse. So I'm proud to say the governor signed my bill, and it's illegal to have surgeries for our kids in the state of Missouri. And you know who I'm talking about. Those campaign conservatives that are on the campaign trail, they talk about how conservative they are. And then, unfortunately, they get to Jeff City and they look like liberal Democrats. And I'll give you some examples. So I can pretty much guarantee that every Republican that comes in here talks about how they're going to get rid of DEI, CRT, SEL, ESG. I call it the woke alphabet soup. So this past legislative session, um, House Bill 2002, which is the Elementary and Secondary Education Bill, offered an amendment. And this amendment said that, hey, we are going to withhold funds from any public schools that are teaching that woke alphabet soup of everything. Yes. And you would think, with a supermajority of Republicans, that that would be an easy task. We have 24 Republican state senators. I'm 34. And you know what? My amendment failed. I had eight Republicans that actually voted for my amendment to get rid of the C CRT and DEI, ESG, SBL, all that wokeness in our public schools. And 16 Republican senators didn't show up to vote or voted against that. That's right, rhinos, campaign conservatives. And I'll tell you, I'm talking about another. I filed Senate Bill 1520. Senate Bill 1520 said, hey, if you're illegal here in the state of Missouri, we're going to make it a state crime if you're illegal here. Because if Biden isn't going to protect our southern border, we need to do everything that we can here in the state of Missouri to do that. And you would think that my Senate Bill 1520 would have been on a fast track with the supermajority of Republicans. But you know what? I did not even get a hearing of that bill in the Senate General Laws Committee. Senator Bernstein did not even have a hearing on that bill. That's what I'm talking about, campaign conservatives. We don't need any more campaign conservatives in Jefferson City. We need conservative fighters that are going to do what they say they would on the campaign trail, stick up for the Missouri Constitution, stick up for the GOP platform, and honor the commitments that they have to you all as voters. Now, a little bit about Secretary of State. So I believe the most secure elections are in person on election day with a photo ID and a paper ballot. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I don't trust the machines. I have a lot of concerns about the machines. Yeah. And then one of the other things we need to make sure is that non-citizens don't vote in the state of Missouri. That's right. And you all are going to have a chance to vote on that. We have SGR 78, which will be on the November ballot for bank choice voting that we don't want here in the state of Missouri. And you will have the opportunity to change the Constitution from saying just all citizens can vote here in the state to only citizens can vote here in the state. We only want citizens to vote in our elections. Because in some states like Maryland, Maine, California, who have similar language like what Missouri has, they're letting non-citizens vote in local elections. Local elections for city council, local elections for school boards. We don't let that in the state of Missouri. We've all heard of omnibus bills, right? It's got some good things, it's got some bad things, but we as legislators only get to vote one time and yes no. Well, we also have Move forward. Move forward. All right. Move forward. Move forward. I could talk loud enough. How about that? Yeah. There we go. We also have a thing called omnibus ballot language. We saw that in 2018, where you as voters, they put multiple subjects, but only you, you only get to vote one time, yes or no, at the bottom. Yep. Clean Missouri had that back in 2018. In there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. 
So, Lincoln, Missouri, back in 2018, had multiple different subjects. But you as voters only got to vote one time yes or no at the bottom. You as voters deserve more than that. As your next Secretary of State, I would kick any ballot language off the ballot that has multiple subjects. You all need to have, be able to vote on each one of those subjects individually. That's the way it should be. And then the last thing as far as Secretary of State, part of funding for our public libraries comes through the Secretary of State's office. And unfortunately, in some of our public libraries that have x-rayed material in the kids section. Number one, it shouldn't be in the kids section. It's not appropriate for kids, just like you wouldn't take your 10-year-old daughter or granddaughter to a rated R movie. And number two, your state taxpayer dollars shouldn't be paid for it. As your next Secretary of State, I will defund and withhold any money that's going to public libraries that has that X-rated material. Like I said, it's not appropriate for kids, and your state taxpayer dollars should be paid for it. My name is Denny Hoskins. Running for Secretary of State, you can find out more about me at, at DennyHoskins.com. I'm proud of a lot of my endorsements. I, I've also been endorsed by Bill Eichel, who I know had to leave to head to another event. But Bill's a great friend. He's a conservative fighter in Jeff City. Thank you very much. Make sure that you're honest, 
and just be a good person and a home place. So I've taken that experience and used it. When we sold in 2011, I've always been taught to get back. And so my family has served on numerous boards, myself included, throughout our home community to make sure that we could do a right for our community that gave us so much we wanted to get back. So as a, um, when I took over our, our company's business, um, I was asked to run the state rep. I didn't want to do it because they had small kids out there. So I live in Robertsville, which is in Old Franklin County, and the county is my government, so I actually ran for county commissioner. I ran for county commissioner three times and lost, and I tell people that for two reasons. One, his record. And two, I'm not ashamed of it. But I'm a fighter and I get back up when I write, get knocked out. So a good friend of mine actually if I ran for county clerk. And I was like, who do I don't work for county clerk? I wouldn't be a decision maker, I'm like, and what I found out was is that, like I told you, I'm the only guy that I have to tell the plan. So I ran for county clerk, and I actually talked about my faith more the word that I did in my policy. I found out that I fell in love with elections. I won the term, obviously, as county clerk. I fell in love with elections. And since I've been in that office, I've saved Franklin County residents over $700,000. I wanted to start at a zero budget every year instead of just taking my last year's budget and adding to it. I go to my pictures with what I need, not with what I want. The other thing I made sure of is that our elections are more safe and secure with better chance custody of the ballots. And anybody in here that ever wants to see our process, I want you to come to our office on election day, and I would be happy to share with you what we do. We have nothing to hide. So fast forwarding, uh, as of, we got redistricted in 2020, I actually was going to run for congressional district too. So if you're fine for your welcome. <laughs> it's not even paying <laughs> So I was actually going to run for CD too. And actually, Roger, wherever he went, over there, I actually was talking to him about my campaign, and he said, and he goes, we do not have a strong term to run for lieutenant governor, which we consider doing it. I had the exact same feeling about me as I did as when somebody asked me to run for county clerk. So I figured, well, I tried to deny it out the first time, I'm not going to do it this time. So I put my name in the hat for lieutenant governor. And we've seen a lot of ups and downs through this campaign. We've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly through this whole campaign. And we've met tens of thousands of great Missourians. And every one of them say the same thing. They're hurting because of the economy, they're hurting because of the inflation rates that we have. And they want people who are going to want to do what they say they're going to do. So we've been working hard. I don't have to go idle miles on my car, but we, my wife and I have put 36,000 miles on our car. And since I just mentioned her, I forgot to mention her in the beginning. I've been married to my wife for 30 years. She's standing in the back back there. I'm so grateful because she, yeah, she deserves a round of applause. She has been with me almost every event on that 36,000 miles that we've traveled. And I cannot do it without her support. So, big girl, while you might have the, the best campaign manager in your district, I'm going to say I've got a pretty darn good one in the state. So, we're very proud of that. Uh, I'm the father of four daughters. Very proud of that. And we also have one grandson. So I actually have one more male in my family, so that's a good thing. So I'm starting to get numbers in my favor. So I mentioned I saved the money with, with the county. The other thing that I've done that I'm extremely proud of, and actually I noticed that lots of back there, the central community did, is we wrote a book all over your county. And we get out every year, we talk to third and fourth graders about civics in school. And what we found out is that we're not only teaching the teachers, we're actually teaching, I'm sorry, we're not only teaching the students, but we're teaching the teachers as well. Because they have no idea what county government is about, what they do. So I'm very proud of that. But when I get done, I tell the students, if you don't remember anything we talked about, remember these two things. And I would encourage you to pick up one of the books if you'd like to, because they're wonderful. Um, they're easy to read. I wrote it out of small words. But uh, I tell them that there's four main registered voters in the state of Missouri. And I'm elected. And I say elected. I say elected official. I say elected official because I know that I work for you, not the other way around. And the other thing I tell them is that if you ever forget this, we are a republic, not a democracy. Yeah. 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 We stood up and, well, we didn't say the pledge tonight, did we? Yeah, we didn't say the pledge. Anyway, I tell them to stand up and say the pledge. It says it right there. The two republic for which we stand, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Under God is the whole basis of what we hold near and dear and what we need to get back to. My whole basis, again, the fact your basis is our foundation's crack. And it starts at home. If our foundation home is not solid, it's not going to lead into the city. But if our city south foundation is not solid, it's not going to go to the county. If our county foundation is not solid, it's not going to go to the state and so forth. Our foundation's crack. 
So what does the lieutenant governor do? Because that's what a lot of people want to know, not so much about me, but what am I going to do once I'm there? Well, constitutionally, the lieutenant governor has two responsibilities. One, he or she is in charge of the Senate and only vote the case to power. My one promise that I will make to you by you sending me to Jeff City, my job is to be present in the Senate. And while I'm here, the other thing that I'm going to push to go back to, which is our state constitution, single subject bill items. Yeah. The other duty that the lieutenant governor has is, is he or she becomes governor in the case of the unpassing or kind of removal of the governor. I will tell you this, that had I been the interim governor, whenever our current governor was out of country, I would have called the Senate and House back to back to one time. It was the number one thing that we should have done in, this, in the state legislature this year that did not get passed. So that's one thing I would have done. But one of the biggest questions I get asked a lot is, am I prepared and am I ready to step up to be governor if I become in that position? And you know, I thought about that a lot. And it's, you know, you really don't know how you're going to act if you get into a position. And to tell you a personal story, when my father was diagnosed with cancer, he passed away three months, pretty much to the day. I had 88 employees look at me, 88 families, that said, are you prepared to do this? I was 32 years old. My whole life I trained for that, but I wasn't prepared, I thought. But I actually took our company from year to year with what my father started with. Because I knew that I could do it because of training that I had, because I'm back to base. I know that I can do that as Lieutenant Governor if I'm asked to serve as your governor. The other, Lieutenant Governor currently also sits on many boards that I have a lot of experience in, that I have done numerous things. One, and have did for seniors. For 20 years, I sat on our current senior center board and instead of standing with the president. And we have, we have our current board for 20 years, I know that I've seen a lot of the progress that we've done. Uh, I was the first tourist chair at the city, and it was first established for six years, which is another thing that the lieutenant governor sits on. I did not serve in our military, but the lieutenant governor sits a lot of these advocates for veterans. I have a very special place in my, in my heart for our veterans. Every Friday, my office was read for and every one employed. That is the only thing I've made my office do since I've been in office. And as an advocate for the veterans, we need to make sure they're taken care of before any of these deal was ever here in our country. They signed a draft check and said, I'm willing to defend your country with my life and not being taken care of. And I would see that they are taken care of. And lastly, the other big thing that the Lieutenant Governor sits on is the Biden Service Program. And that's something they're here to do as well because that's basically shop local. And it's Missouri Company. And as a former Missouri company, uh, that is one thing that I take very, very dear. When we built our new plant back in 1994, my father went to the state legislators and said, hey, we're getting ready to build this massive plant. We're going to go from 12 full-time employees to 32. What can you do to help us? He actually had a legislator look in the face and say, move your plan out of the state for one year, come back in, and we'll give you $50,000 for a full-time job. Wow. My father, without Patty and I, looked at that legislator and said, forget 1 through 12, help me from 13 to 32, and they told him no. That's the problem. We're not helping existing businesses that are already here that we did not give the farm away to to be here, and we need to start helping them. And the thing that I would like to do that we travel around this great state is we see so many vacant buildings in every community, and that's a problem. I would love to go to the existing businesses that are there and see what we can do to help give them a hand up to either move into those businesses to actually make a vital part of their expansion or for entrepreneurs. And that's another thing that I would do as your lieutenant governor. I know we got one more speaker. Everybody wants to hear Will's talk. Will talk. He's a great speaker. Uh, the one nice thing I would say, because this is my home and it's nice to be at a home event, uh, so I don't have to travel for four hours, but uh, we got to meet a lot of candidates on this campaign trail. And we got to see the heart and soul of most candidates. Because it's like you're living with I could give most everybody stuff speech, I'm sure they could give most of mine, uh, almost verbatim. But there's a lot of good candidates that have been in this room tonight, and I will tell you about the heart and soul that they have, that they are great people, and please consider voting for us on August. August is the election for us. If you wait till November, it's too late. I expect 100% voter turnout in my county every year. That's what, we, that's what we prepare for. 
I was asked why I say that is because the voters expect me to have 100% ready, therefore I demand 100%. Our April election had 13% turnout. All elections are local. I honestly expect a larger turnout for this one because there's so much on the ballot. But the August election is our election. November is too late. Tell your friends, tell your family. Early voting has already started. You can come to my office if you live in Franklin County. Do that in my office right now with no excuse, and we would love to have you. My name is Tim Baker. I'm the Governor. Thank you very much. God bless you.
They were going to keep President Trump on trial every single day from January through until the November election. They indicted him in four different courts. They were trying to seize his businesses, take away every dollar he ever earned, and they tried to kick him off the ballot, which doesn't just affect his constitutional right to run for office, it affects each and every one of our constitutional right to pick a candidate of our choice. So we got to work and we started fighting. And the more we fought and the harder we fought, the more that we started to win. And you guys all follow the news, you all know what's happened. In case after case after case, we have won victory after victory after victory for President Trump. And I am proud of the fact that at the U.S. Supreme Court and in courtrooms across the America, it's been a team of Missouri lawyers, which I am a proud part of, that has stood in the breach and won for President Trump over and over and over again. You know, many of you have heard me tell this story. Last December, when we went up to the U.S. Supreme Court for the first time against Deranged Jack Smith and the Biden Department of Justice, Politico, DC Magazine, wrote this article about how Jack Smith had hired a guy named Michael Dreeben to represent him in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. And they made Michael Dreeben out to be the greatest lawyer in the history of the Republic, the next Daniel Webster. This is a fellow swamp preacher. He was Bob Mueller's legal aide during the whole Russia collusion investigation hoax. But they made this guy out to be the greatest lawyer. And then they said that Trump had hired three guys from Missouri. And they said we were from the outside of elite legal circles, and they set us up to be the absolute fall guys in this story. And then two days later, we won nine to nothing at the U.S. Supreme Court.
We've built the most conservative Supreme Court in a generation. We've upheld the First Amendment. We've upheld the Second Amendment. We have finally, thank God, consigned Roe versus Wade to the ash heap of history. And those things will keep on coming because for once the conservative movement grew a backbone and for once the conservative movement stood up against the left, fought against the left, beat the left. That's the same attitude I want to bring to the Missouri Attorney General's office. We deserve a winner fighting for our rights from that office. And today, unfortunately, that office is doing far too much losing. Last year, Missouri paid out over $28 million in verdicts against the state. That's double of what we had paid out in any previous year. That is more than we paid out in four years under Eric Schmidt combined. We have lost to Planned Parenthood repeatedly in court. We have lost to the transgender clinics in court. We've lost to the U.S. Supreme Court on the most important First Amendment case in a generation. I think it's long past time that we put someone with a proven record of winning back in the Missouri Attorney General's office because that's what we deserve and that's what we need. Somebody who's going to fight and win for the state in courtrooms from the smallest county courthouse here in Missouri all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. We have 10 days, 12 days, excuse me, 12 days to determine the future of this state. We have a once in a generation opportunity to fundamentally reshape Missouri government. And if we don't take this opportunity, if we don't vote on August 6th, if we don't get all of our friends to vote, if we don't make these elections too big to rig, as President Trump would say, we're going to be waiting a very long time for another opportunity. So I would beg you all, I know everybody in this room is going to vote, but talk to your friends, talk to your family. If you're a social media person, become a keyboard warrior for the next 12 days. Make your views known. Make sure that people in your communities, in your churches, your family, make sure they know what's at stake. In Missouri today, it's not enough to elect Republicans. We need to elect true conservatives. We need to elect people who are finally going to kick the bums out of Jefferson City and build the government that we deserve. My name is Will Sharp. It would be an honor to have you support this August 6th.